have control. Breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on a pseudo day off. I had court today, hence my hair. You know, whatever it's doing, it's windy as hell. Um, but I'm going to do a video today at the request of something that came up in one of the concealment videos, and that was to talk about Filster holsters. So we're going to do that because it's kind of a really cool concept. Uh, so that sounds fun and interesting to you. Go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend. The channel's growing. It's amazing. I appreciate it, and I thank you. If you're looking to get in touch with me, it's Uncle Freedom 213 on Facebook or Instagram, or F Uncle Freedom 213 at Outlook.com. Take a look down in the description box below if you wish to support the channel. All of the affiliates of the channel exist down there. Uh, there's a Linktree account that'll take you. Everybody's there that supports me. If you were going to do it anyway and use those links, I thank you. If you're not looking to do anything, like and subscribe, tell a friend, share the video, because that does help as well. Every time you like it, tell somebody just like you that I exist, and that's kind of neat. So when we talk about holsters, so for the longest time, I was like everybody else. Um, you're inundated with things like the T-Rex Arms Sidecar, um, which is not a bad holster. It does, now the, the as my tastes have evolved, there are things I don't like about this. And then my first real flipped down that road where I got a hold of something that was very different from the norm was this guy. This is the Tenacore Keratum Lux. I have an entire video to this. I'll leave a link up here. It's a really cool holster. And once you get hold of it and you start messing around with it, and you're like, man, this, this just feels and fits different than the other holsters. So this is how you get hooked, right? Because you're like, all right, this is different. Well, I am a big fan when I'm at work. I listen to podcasts. I listen to books because I'm a student. I'm a student of everything I learn constantly. I learn from some of you good people in the comments. Sometimes people will bring up something that I did not know. I will go research it further and be like, man, that's really cool. Let's add that. Uh, and this is one of those cases. I'm listening to this primary and secondary podcast. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. It is awesome. There's well over 300 episodes. There is tons of gun and gear stuff in there. Mentality theory. It's awesome. Um, and one of them I was listening to was like, uh, it was a concealment video or it could have been holster literacy. I can't remember exactly which one, but it had John and Sarah of Filster holsters on there. And they were discussing things known as concealment mechanics. Now as a concealed carrier, I will tell you much like you, I have altered and modified things to make them work better for me or to hide the firearm better. But I never really went into the weeds. And I had heard of the Filster floodlight before because one of the people that I put a lot of stock into what they say as a fellow instructor is Aaron Cowan. Sage Dynamics, the dude is awesome. Um, I, I, I love the stuff he puts out. He talked about the floodlight in the video, and I was like, huh, I need to need to file that away. So in watching this video, or listening to this podcast, they are discussing some of the stuff that they do as a company. And something that really hit me was they said, we're not a holster company. We're a concealment technology company. Okay, so that's a neat concept. Now, Filster makes a lot of stuff. They make a lot of very, like, specifically molded holsters. They don't offer a ton of stuff. Nowhere near the volume and kinds and types of stuff that, like, T-Rex or, or, you know, offers. But what they do, they do incredibly well. And in checking this out, I came across their Enigma, which I am going to get. I don't have one yet, so I won't speak on it. But I will tell you, I have watched people in the Filster Concealment Workshop Facebook group in slacks and a button-down shirt that's tucked in, draw a handgun that I could not see in the same amount of time I draw a handgun from concealment in appendix with it. I'm like, oh my God, whatever that is, I must have it in my life. Um, so I'm going to be looking into one of those. I am very curious. Um, 
there is no way in hell that Philster or Tessa Booth of Armed and Style is paying attention to what I do. Um, but if you are and you wish to uh, send me one of those, saving the money would be great. If not, I'm going to buy it anyway because I think it's cool. So does that mean now that I'm looking at Philster that other holsters are obsolete? Absolutely not. No. Henry Holsters, JM Custom Kydex, Dark Star Gear, Tenacore, and Filster are the companies that you hear people that know this and do this for a living or in places where can, if the gun is not concealed, they get into trouble. Those are the companies they're running. I'm going to pay attention to people that that's their life because they know more about it than I do. And the Filster stuff just really intrigued me. And what really intrigues me about the Filster, specifically the Floodlight series, is the fact that it indexes off of the weapon light and not the weapon, which means if I have, example, two or three Surefires, and I love Surefire lights, and I have a SIG, a Glock, and a CZ, for example, because that's what I have in front of me, and I have those lights on there, I don't need a CZ with a... Uh, an X300 holster and a uh, SIG with an X300 holster. And then, a, you know, maybe I have like the, a, you know, full size and I got to have the full size version with this or the P09 and the P07 with those. And I have to have two additional holster for that. No, as long as it has the light on it, the gun fits in the holster and it works. That saves a bunch of money. And the thing is, they're not like, they're not stupid expensive. So take this for you. This is how I started. That's how we got there. So first off, let's, uh, all right, so this is my service pistol. Gen 3, Glock 22, 40 cal, Tyrant CNC, Magwell, Mod Light PL350 G2. This is a big honking firearm, and I carry this on duty. So I figured the best way to try this would be to buy the floodlight for the uh, Mod Light PL350. I can put this light on a Glock 19. I could put it on a Glock 23. I could put it on a 10 mil Glock. I could put it on my P09. I could put it on uh, a Shadow Systems Glock. I could put it on my P320, and it will go into this holster and conceal. That's insane. It also saves a ton of money. This is just cool, man. And these guys have no freaking idea who I am, other than the fact that they've taken my money a few times. But some of what makes this holster neat is, um, you'll notice there is no left or right hand. That is because... This guy is drilled out exactly the same on both sides. So if you're a lefty, same holster I've got. You just switch the stuff around. Um, I have a concealment claw on here, and this ships with a separate concealment claw piece to raise or lower it. It also ships with the overbelt hooks. If you don't want to run the loops, personally, I think the loops are awesome. But what makes this holster function is the fact that the retention on the firearm itself is based off of a shock cord system. So let's pull this guy out. Actually, we're going to stay on the same one. So what I basically got here is shock cord. And you can tighten this shock cord up by threading it through or not to increase or decrease the, the tension on the firearm side of the gun. You have retention screws over here for, for uh, tension on the light. This seems so simple. I mean, I've got uh, Filster's modular holster wedge kit. It comes with a, a whole bunch of wedges and loop fields so that you can attach the loop and then use the wedges. Now, when I started researching Filster to look at these holsters, I got onto their website. Uh, it's Filster.com, so P-H-L-S-T-E-R.com. There is a tab in the top that says Learn. I highly recommend if you are into concealment and you think you could do better or you think you know everything and you think nobody can teach you anything, also go look at this because you're going to learn just like me. You're wrong. There are tons of videos by Sarah and by Tessa Booth of Armed and Style. Tessa is awesome, by the way. Uh, doesn't know me from Adam, but she has great concealment videos. Sarah from Filster has great concealment videos. They go through and show you how to make your own wedges, how to use wedges, how to use different techniques to find the hot problem spot, how to find the best place for you to carry the firearm, how to eliminate hot spots to keep it from tipping out, what the kill principle is. All this is there. It's free. Go look it up. I'm not going to insult them by giving you my version of it. What I'll give you is my experience and what I've done with it. So I will tell you, and I will put a video, a picture on one of the sides where there's the most room, of me in a pair of pants and a t-shirt, and not like a big baggy t-shirt, like a fitted t-shirt, because that's how all of them are now, 
with this firearm, with this light and this magwell in this holster, completely concealed and not visible, no lines, no printing. That's awesome. And as I learned pretty quick, that's what concealment technology is. And that was a really game changing experience. Um, if you want to get better and learn this stuff and be a part of a community, again, I'm a part of this community, just like a lot of other groups on Facebook, but the Filster Concealment Workshop, great people over there. Almost all of the major holster manufacturers, when you start talking about the, the guy that owns Henry Holsters or JM Custom Kydex or uh, ASP, uh, Active Self-Protection, he's in that group. Um, the guy, Everybody's there. And everybody's sharing information and trying to help each other on this journey to be as efficient as possible. But I will tell you, this handgun conceals under a t-shirt for me. And that's really freaking cool. Because in the Minutemen world, as we talked about in Minutemen Concealment, if I can take this off of my battle belt, and I have to go low vis, and I go, and now this is concealed, I have a full fighting firearm concealed. And I have that capability. It's awesome. What really sells me on this, though, is no matter what gun I put into it, with just the adjustment on the shock cord, I can carry it. That's so awesome. Um, I know there's some debate. People have said it from the other the Uncomfortable Trees video. I don't like pistol lights. I don't like this. I think you're wrong. Whatever, dude. Here's the thing. This is America. I respect your right to think I'm wrong. That's cool. I, you also need to respect my right to think you're wrong. But the thing is, what we lose a lot of times in translation isn't the fact that I think you're wrong or that you think I'm wrong. It's because we are failing to at least acknowledge that my viewpoints are coming from a very different place than yours. Um, I, in fact, do spend the vast majority of my life uh, at work looking for bad people in dark places that don't want you to find them. I also deal with all of the crap lighting stuff, low pressure sodium lights, transitional lighting. Uh, photonic barriers, crazy stuff like trying to see through window tent or through the headlights of a car to identify a threat in a car. The stuff I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are what influences my decision on a weapon-mounted light, why it's so important. And trust me, I'm going to drive this stuff home in the low-light video. If you have any, any questions about it, I'm going to do my best to answer them. Um, and I'm going to shoot, I'm going to, I'm not just going to talk to you from here. We're going to have video footage and everything of me out doing this. If you've been following the post, you've seen me taking pictures and video out on the range or uh, out at the airport already looking at this. It's a game changer. Once you get exposed to how you're wrong uh, or why that, that decision was influenced. So for me, I, if I have the option now, I do love my smaller concealed flashlights, like TLR 7A. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to pick a smaller light because your gun needs a smaller light 7a7 sub this is where it's at period i don't know of anything that is this good period um they're perfectly fine and functional no you're not going to do a bunch of the stuff i do with the duty gun with this light but if you've identified a threat with a flashlight now you need to use both hands this is pretty good um but what i think is so cool because i run full-size lights so i can have things like there's an ultra, there's a turbo, right? I can put these on whatever gun I want. Same thing, TLR1HL, one of my favorite lights. This thing right here, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, preview this for you. This X300 Ultra gets smoked every day by this TLR1HL. Just because it says Surefire doesn't make it better, this thing eats it. But I love the TLR1HL. I have six or seven of them at this point. But I love firearms like the CZ P07, the P09. I love the X uh, the X Carry. I love Glock. And it turns out if you go to the version two, which is the newest version of the Floodlight, this is what you get. And this is for the TLR1. If I have a Glock with a TLR1, I have a holster for it. If I put this light on any other firearm, and I stick it in here, I have a freaking holster for it. So they did some new things with this guy here. This one ships with the two different kinds of shock cord, but that's it. Again, the Filster wedges that I ordered uh, separate and put on, shock cord to create the tension on the body of the firearm, tensioning screws for that of the light. These ship factory with discrete carry concepts clips. They are also fully ambidextrous. 
they have this new technology called comfort scape. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I saw that, I'm like, uh-huh, good gimmick. It actually freaking works. Um, so if you carry appendix, you will notice when you take your holster off, this is all super wet and sweaty. Um, and yes, I immediately covered up my comfort scape and put a wedge because that was more important. But it actually does vent some air pretty well. I love the inclusion of the discrete carry concept clips. They're very tough. Um, incredible retention. Even if you don't have them on a belt, they hook up just fine. But any gun I want to run with a TLR1, I put light on gun, I insert gun in holster, and I have a concealed carry rig. And that is freaking amazing. Um, these are about 130 ish dollars. Uh, the wedge sets like 30 bucks, I think. But if you are a full size light carrier, and there's a lot of benefit to carrying a gun, a holster this long. Even when my Glock 26 is in a 19 holster because it gives me more depth below the belt and it keeps my keeps it below the belt so that my stomach and stuff doesn't push the gun out and print. Now, something else, that's where these wedges come in. These fill the gap and actually push the grip back further to my stomach, helping me to hide it better. Same thing as what the claw does. The claw pulls that grip closer. All of that works in harmony and perfect union to create this giant monstrosity of a package that I can appendix carry under a t-shirt and you can't see. Good holsters make a difference. Now, am I revising my recommended holster list? No, I still think Tier 1 Concealed makes good holsters. I still like my T-Rex stuff. I have several. I still run them. Um... I had somebody that uh, was very upset that I had recommended Tentacore and I didn't cover it, but I, I don't know if they didn't watch that part because I actually had Tentacore wrote out because I just said Keratum holsters. This is the model. It's the Keratum Lux. I adore Tentacore holsters. I honestly, if you wanted my opinion, I don't have experience with Henry, j &M, Custom, Kydex, or Dark Star gear. Maybe I will do my best to get my hands on them just so I can speak eloquently and informed and educated on them. But I'm telling you right now, if my option from this day, from going forward was to pick a holster fitted to a handgun. I'm buying a Tentacore. End of discussion. These are amazing. Uh, the Henry Holsters has a really cool light bearing holster as well, but I've never tried it. Um, I might have to reach out to them and uh, see like what I need to do to get my hands on one. Um, I might just order it. Uh, depends on how busy they are. But I love this freaking holster. But I will tell you, the ability for me to get off work, pull out my duty gun, Drop my extended mag with the base plate on it. Put a flush fitting 15 round mag in here. Do this into the front of my pants. And I am concealed carrying the exact same firepower that I left to work with. It's awesome, man. It's, it's, it's a different game. The Floodlight 1 is only available for the PL350. So if you have a PL350, there's a good option for you to look at. The new version of it with the Comfort Scape, I will tell you this is more comfortable than that. It is a noticeable difference. So if you have a PL350, you're going to be bummed. But if you run the other lights, the Streamlight or the X300 or the TLR1, you're in luck because that's what these are made for. And this thing is freaking amazing. Um, I, I, I just, I, when people are invent ways to do things more efficiently that cost me less money in the long run, I'm really appreciative of that. And these guys do that. Like I said, 130 ish, 140 bucks to get your hands on this holster right here with discrete carry concept clips. Much better concealing than most things you're going to get on the market. I can run any freaking handgun that'll accept a TLR1 in this holster right here. No problem. With optics, without optics, with a comp, it doesn't matter because I have a big open bottom. That's it. This is just stupid, simple solving of a problem. But this is one of those examples where the simplest answer to solving the problem was the best freaking answer for solving that problem. This is just cool. It works. I am stoked on these. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm very excited. I love this. I will be ordering one for the X300 because I don't have one. And uh, I feel like I need to give them a fair shake with the X300 lights. I know there's another one out there. Tier 1 Concealed makes one. It's for the Modern Samurai Project. I reached out to Tier 1 Concealed to talk to them about wait times and how long it would take me to actually get one of those. I have not heard back from them yet, but I would give it a fair shake. And I'm going to be honest, if it sucks and it's not as good as that, I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you, and this is what I'll leave you with. If you want information, which I know you do, and you should be striving for it because we don't know everything and we should constantly be looking for ways to learn more. For those people that think 
I speak from a high and mighty place because I know it all. I don't know anything. I know what I know because I have a lot of experience under my belt. I have put myself in very bad situations in my life and I've come out of it. And I do this for a living. So, but I understand that I don't know. And part of being smart in, in, as you get older is knowing that you don't know stuff. Like that's the hardest thing to learn as an adult. You don't know everything and it's important that you understand that and then go find the people that do and learn from them. I do that. Be a student of the gun. Always look for better knowledge, more knowledge, and try to improve yourself. That is the game. I highly recommend it. Get on Filster's website. Go check out the learn section with Tessa and Sarah and John. Um, Armed and Styled is Tessa Booth's uh, YouTube channel. She does a lot more uh, female-friendly content with how to conceal and some of the unique problems they have. But her concealment techniques video, multi-gender, who cares? She is awesome. Sarah, awesome at what she does. It's freaking amazing. Their delivery is great, and the information is rock freaking solid. And I'll tell you right now that there's a reason that a lot of the high-level instructors I know are running holsters like this and not running holsters like that. Again, I love mine, but I'm telling you, there's a definitive difference between carrying in that and carrying in this for comfort, concealability, and all that good stuff. So, guys, there you go. 30,000 foot view. My thoughts on the Filster floodlights, kind of what I love about them. Um, like I said, I'm going to get a floodlight too for the X300, and I desperately want to get my hands on an Enigma. That's one of the coolest things. So, uh, John and Sarah, if um, you want to hook a guy up, I, I mean... I am not above being like, you want to hook me up? Because I have a public servant salary and I have three daughters. So, and uh, I don't make a ton of money doing YouTube. Um, people think we're rich when we make <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> uh, this is my entire YouTube royalty check for last month right here. And I did it because I didn't have the newest version of the Ultra. And it was important for me to have it to bring you the most reliable information in the low light video. That's how it is. I don't have a problem spending the money because I'm going to use it and I'm going to test it and I'm going to do what I need to do. And uh, yeah, that's how it is. I don't make a ton of money. I don't have Patreon. I don't do any of that yet. Um, I'm just still tickled that people support me by watching on here. And I think it's really, really cool. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys spending a little time with me today. Hopefully you found this informative. You learned something new. If you have questions, go ahead and reach out. If you have a holster company that you like their holsters, leave it down below because I would be interested in finding out if there's a better mousetrap. Those of you that watch me on Facebook all the time, I will leave those kinds of comments and posts all over the place. And it's, uh, people get mad because they're like, you don't know. And I'm like, it's not that I don't know. It's that I want a better mousetrap. And odds are, there's a guy in that group that's figured out how to do something better than I have. And I want to I want to take that information, use it, and bring it to other people. Because that's what this is about. So guys, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.